Hey man, did you see that score I just got? Son of a bitch. Jerry, I'm the one that shot the damn thing. I'm the one that shot the dang thing. Jerry, I'm the one that shot it. I shot it for sure. I, I got it on camera. You really want to sit there and argue with me right now. I shot it with my Rossi, the new 410 I just got. No, man, I shot it with my shotgun. How the hell do you keep finding me? First, you were all the way out by Geneva, and now you're here. I don't know, I ain't got answers. Welcome back to another episode. Triple F Ranch. We's hunting some nasty birds today. Other than starlings being disgusting birds, whenever there are blackbirds around, robins, any other type of bird other than a dove, doves don't like to be around. That was one thing I found very, very strange. In my last video of me going goose hunting for my first time, me and Brandon were laying down in the cornfield that I always dove hunt. And of course, we had goose decoys out there, and there were doves everywhere. Guys, I am not kidding, and I am not over exaggerating. Me and Brandon probably seen 2,000 doves in this field. It was the most I'd ever seen ever hunting this field, and this is the dove field that I hunt on a regular basis during dove season. And there was a few times, you know, I'd have a flock of doves flying over here, and then all of a sudden, you know, there would be a whole group of starlings come in and those doves would disappear. I don't know what it is. If you guys can tell me, if you guys know something that I don't know, please leave a comment down below and let me know. I would love to find out because I find it very, very interesting. I'm using the brand new Rossi 410 that I just bought for $90. It is a single shot break action. I did an unboxing of this gun. You guys can check it out in the top right corner of your screen right now. Get out All right, so check this out. Any other time I'm out here dove hunting, there's always blackbirds that fly over. Any type of bird other than a dove. So I pulled up and I'm looking down the field and there's probably 200 doves that take off at the end of the field that fly straight up. I guarantee you I'm gonna have all types of doves fly over today. Unfortunately, dove season does not open until next weekend, December 14th. Geese! Yeah, I really wish I had some goose decoys right now. I was goose hunting. Look at all the doves. Man! Uh, there's probably 300 of them, 400 of them. You know, no big deal. Alright guys, see you in a couple of weeks. Look at that. Look at that! All kinds of them. A lot of food out there, boys. So I'm gonna have to be very, very careful tonight if there are any blackbirds that fly over. I'm gonna have to make sure there's no doves in here because I definitely don't want to hit any. And I'm sure if I did, the DNR would have something to say about it. Now well, there's bird number one. I'm kind of under the theory that actually if if starlings and sparrows come around any type of doves, the doves will leave the area. They, for some reason, they don't like other birds being around them. So I just saw a squirrel running up this tree over here. Squirrel season is, and uh, we're gonna see if we can go over and get him. That squirrel's right there in the top of that tree. Got him. So as I was looking for that bird in there, I came across this. I like finding stuff like this, kind of cool. I'm guessing it's probably for a power line of some sort. It says made in the US of A, 2141. So that's kind of a cool find. The thing that amazes me about finding stuff like this is like this is just in a little patch of woods here. How does this stuff get here? I'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there that might be watching this video that have ever been walking through the woods and you find like random glass pieces, ceramic, porcelain. You know, I'm just wondering how this stuff gets here. Like there's obviously no power lines. I mean, there may have been some running through here a very long time ago, but if you guys know what this is, leave a comment down below. And if you guys are liking the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you leave me a like, please. 
And at the end of this video here, I'm actually going to go home and research what that thing is that I found, and I'll let you guys know. There's a coyote. Never fails. Never fails. I ended up seeing geese, sandhill cranes, doves, and I even seen a coyote. I knew this was gonna happen. I rarely seen any blackbirds. Shot a few sparrows, but other than that, I didn't really see what exactly what I was looking for, which was starlings. They're pretty pretty common birds that fly around there. Obviously, when I'm dove hunting, I mean we see them all the time constantly flying over so it's been a pretty interesting night i took the 410 out for the first time on a hunt and i'll tell you what the gun is a pretty powerful gun that squirrel was probably 15 20 yards away i was using a two and a half inch shell seven and a half shot and it got the job done pretty quick i mean i shot that squirrely fell i walked over there and he didn't move move one bit and the gun is like super accurate too if you guys want to see a review of that gun let me know in the comment section below. Did you guys see me take a shot at that coyote just to kind of scare him off? I, I guess it really wasn't necessary, but nobody likes coyotes around here. But I knew it was going to happen. I called it as soon as I was heading out there. I was like, watch, I'm going to see everything but starlings and sparrows. But I was able to kill a few sparrows, so kind of went out there and got done what I wanted to get done. The glass thing that I found, did some research on it, but before we get into it, while I was chasing that coyote, and it ended up falling out of my pocket. It was getting dark. I couldn't find it. I went back through, looked at the GoPro footage, and kind of listened to what I was saying while I was reading it off. And I did do some research on it. So this is a Hemming Ray. It is a glass insulator for telephone lines. It was produced in the 1950s and 1960s. The style number is number nine. And this website's kind of cool. It's called Hemming Ray Info. And the rarity scale, it shows actually how rare these glass pieces are. And I'm a coin collector, so this might be something that I kind of get into, maybe a little bit. But the rarity scale, it says very common. So the usage was for telephone rural. So obviously, if you guys don't know what rural means, it is was for telephone lines that were outside of city limits. So it's kind of a cool find this evening. Got a few really cool challenge videos coming up. Number one being the 410 dove hunt challenge. When we went goose hunting, I did a goose hunting video. We didn't get anything, but you guys can check out my channel, find that video and watch that one as well. Really cool, it's my first time going waterfowl hunting. So you guys can check that one out. But while me and Brandon were out there, we were laying down. Of course, we had all the decoys out and there were doves flying around everywhere. The most doves I've seen in either being out there or on one hunt, like I'm not over exaggerating. We probably seen 2000 doves. So I'm gonna try to get Brandon to see, or even myself, I'm probably gonna start buying decoys, get into goose hunting. And I'm actually gonna go set up some goose decoys. I'm going to do a goose and dove hunt all at the same time. So that's another video I'm gonna be doing. I got some, Stuff in my notebook laid out too, some upcoming videos I'm going to be doing, some aviation stuff, talking about the pilot finance that I went through, my thoughts on that, and some other things. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you again, Triple F Range.